Okay, uh, yeah, here we go. Konami Entertainment of Japan presents. Uh, Yubi, oh, Dolby. <laughs> Thought it might have been Ubisoft. That would make no sense at all. Uh, yeah, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. And, uh, you know what, we can watch this. I showed a little bit of it on my uh, test video. But, uh, you know, it's worth it. They go with the whole James Bond theme. And it really worked. I, th I think so, at least. Snake Eater. And, uh, yeah, I think I pretty much have the brightness issues resolved. I cranked it up, like, another third of the way, because I didn't want, I didn't want to wash everything out, but, um, th it's, it's a dark game anyway, so, uh, bear with me, and, uh, you should be able to see what I'm looking at. Uh, yeah, that'll do. We're, we'll hear this later. And I'm I'm basically doing this let's play just how I would be playing for fun, you know. Uh, so, well, first of all, this really isn't important, but just a little thing, a little something you could do if you uh, press down on L3 and R3, you know, you can switch the backgrounds. Uh, I think there's a way. Oh yeah. Uh, R1 speeds up the m animations. Uh, I think L1 slows them down. I uh, I don't know. Not really important, but just little little things like that I might point out when I remember them. So, uh, all right. Uh, new game. Don't. Oh! Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> every, every time, every time I go to play like this or Final Fantasy VII, the, the circle button for the OK button always throws me off. Um, and, uh, okay, I'm playing Metal Gear series for the first time. I like Metal Gear Solid 1. I like Metal Gear Solid 2. Uh, I personally prefer the first one. But I'm gonna pick number two just because it. Damn it! <laughs> I'm gonna pick number two just because uh, it gives you a little extra cutscene. So uh, I'm gonna see if we can get through some of the beginning, and I think I'm gonna upload these in like chunks, like maybe play for a half hour and then. After the end of World War II. Whoa! I don't have to. The world was split into two. <laughs> I don't have to voice East act. West. This marked the beginning of the era called the Cold War. Yeah, this is dark on my screen too. It's nighttime. And uh, so far, out of the responses I saw, nobody, nobody objected to uh, watching all the cutscenes and codec calls. So, as long as I can stand them. I'm gonna let him play. Approaching Soviet airspace. It's been long enough that you know it'll be fun, like watching a movie. Ready to go. Drop zone still showing a high pressure mass. Cap okay. Good. We've got high visibility. Oxygen hose to interior connector. Put on your mask. And 
if you've played the second one, you would recognize that as Raiden, or Raiden, Raiden, I don't know. Does this panty waste know what he's doing? Approaching release point. Ten minutes to drop off. Hey, he's dead. He said put out the cigar and put on your mask. how I'm going to do all these cutscenes and everything, so I'm just going to record, you know, as much footage as I can until I get to, like, a playable spot, and then I'll stop, save it, whatever, and go back, edit it down, and, you know, make it YouTube-friendly. some important news. The head of the CIA has finally given us the green light for the virtuous mission. Virtual mission? No, the virtuous mission. The future of our FOX unit depends on it. If it succeeds, we'll be officially organized into a unit. Virtuous mission? Sounds like some kind of initiation ritual. You know, don't get cocky. This isn't a training arm. Right. So what exactly is this wonderful mission? Well... About two years ago, a certain Soviet scientist requested asylum in the West through one of our moles. His name is Nikolai Stepanovich Sokolov. He's head of the OKB-754 Design Bureau, one of the Soviet's top-secret weapon research facilities, and the East's foremost expert on weapons development. Sokolov? Isn't he that famous rocket scientist? The very same. On April the 12th, 1961, the Soviets achieved the first manned space flight in history. The Earth was blue, but there was no God. Well spoken. <laughs> the rocket that carried Yuri Gagarin to orbit was the A-1, known as the Vostok rocket. Sokolov is said to be the man most responsible for the multi-engine cluster used in that rocket. After Gagarin's flight, Sokolov left rocket development Become the head of the newly established design bureau. From a lowly technician to head of a design bureau, that's quite a success story. So why do you want to defect? It seems he'd become afraid of his own creations. Afraid? Call it a crisis of conscience. And for that, he left his country and his family behind and went over the fence? Not exactly. One of his conditions was that his family was also to be taken safely to the West. Used a mole to get the family out first, and succeeded in sneaking Sokolov over the Berlin Wall shortly afterwards. I was the one who conducted the operation. The security on the eastern side was still full of holes back then. Then what? We got Sokolov over in one piece, but the whole ordeal had left him exhausted, and we checked him into a hospital in West Berlin. It took him two weeks and more than 600 miles to get from the research facility in the Soviet Union to Berlin. He was in no condition to say anything coherent. 
And it was only a week later that we had something much bigger on our hands. All right, uh, we're about at 10 minutes now, and I know what I'm going to do. October the 16th. I'm going to say goodbye to you now, President Kennedy and then I'm going to shut up for a while, cut this video, and overlap the next one with a little bit that you've already seen just to refresh you. So, thanks for watching, and come back for number two in Let's Play Metal Gear Solid 3. Snake well, the Soviets here. didn't back down. See ya. Their armed on Soviet transport ships carrying missiles continued on course towards Cuba. U.S. and Soviet forces went on alert for a all-out nuclear war.